Hey guys, you have code 43 here today with another car review for you. Today, I have the keys to this 2014 Chevrolet Sonic Turbo RS with a 1.4 liter turbo four cylinder and a six speed manual. First, we'll take a walk around the car and check out the styling. The Sonic was Chevrolet's subcompact hatchback, apart from the sub subcompact hatchback Chevy Spark, which was even smaller than this. But this would slot in between the Spark and the Chevy Cruze from the last couple of years, which was their compact sedan. Came in, this came in hatchback and sedan forms. Originally came out for the 2013 model year and then ending with the 2020 model year after a refresh sometime around 2017. They were offered with two engines, this 1.4 liter turbo, which is 138 horsepower and 155 pound-feet of torque, if I remember correctly, and then a 1.8 liter non-turbocharged engine, which was also 138 horsepower and I believe 130 pound-feet of torque. Competition would be like uh, Kia Rio Hyundai Accent, um, Ford Fiesta. Chrysler didn't really make a car this small besides like Fiat 500. Stuff like that. So, we're going to talk about some of the styling elements on the outside, then check out the interior and the trunk under the hood and then we'll go for a drive. I borrowed this car from my friend Steve. He was very gracious as to lend me the keys, so I was gracious enough to go take it for a car wash for him because uh, he and I both live with the same trouble of living on a dirt road, so our cars are dirty all the time. But it looks a lot better now that it's gone through the wash. <laughs> So as far as modifications on this particular car, you can see the windows are tinted all the way around. Looks like about 50%. The front high beam headlights have been tinted yellow, kind of an ode to the European cars. Other than that, I believe this car is completely stock. He told me it's just had a fresh reman transmission put in it a few thousand miles ago. Uh, this one's got 88,000 miles on it looks very good for its age. So around the back, the RS has this telltale spoiler that hangs off the back of the trunk with a little dip in the middle. It has a nice aggressive appearance. The taillights kind of have the aftermarket taillight appearance uh, that you used to see in the early to mid 2000s that people would put on a lot of their cars either with like the chrome background or a black background similar to how these have but these are stock this is how it came the rs also gets a different rear bumper treatment and you can see the large single tailpipe trapezoidal outlet down there it's a single exhaust all the way back from the turbo they also did a really unique thing here where the rear door door handles are mounted up again the d pillar i'm sorry the c pillar effectively behind up to demonstrate a short bit when we go to check out the interior. Should be 17 inch wheels on this car. Yep, 215, 50 R17s. A nice styled five spoke aluminum wheel that's dark gray in color. They look nice on this car. Color keyed mirror caps as well. This car is almost black but really it's kind of a really dark gray metallic doesn't show up really well without the sunlight here you can see some of the flecks in the paint there then up front i showed you the yellow headlights but this car also has fog lights and then these kind of dual pod headlights kind of a retro look to them i apologize if you hear me shiver today it's 29 degrees outside but i was determined to get a couple of videos today it is 
early in January here in Michigan, and that's just how it is. Next, we'll check out the lights. Decided to turn on the high beams instead of the fog lights, then you can see the yellow tint over those. It's a cool look, I'm sure it helps with some visibility at night. All incandescent bulbs up front, then around back, all incandescent bulbs as well. Brake lights, running lights up top, reverse lights at the bottom, and signals in the middle. Next, we'll have a look under the hood. You can hear the sound of the doors right here, too. Like I said, GM's 1.4 liter turbo, four cylinder, 16 valves, dual overhead cam, 138 horsepower, should be 150 or so pound feet of torque. Looks like he also has a KNN and drop in air filter in here as well. Pretty easy access to everything brake fluid, battery, coolant reservoir, washer fill, fuse box, oil fill, and check and your air filter over there. It is direct injected as well, which is why you can hear some clatter under the hood. Also turn the fog lights on for the shots so you can see those. Now we'll go take a look in the trunk. Rear view camera right here, and then trunk release is right under the middle. It is an electric release. Behind the second row, there's a little bit of space here. It's a small trunk area, but if you lift up the floor, there's some more space down below to store some things. Just one cargo light bulb over here, and then there is a shelf here as well that closes with the hatch in order to cover your goodies. There's also a grab handle here for closing the trunk. Next, we'll check out the interior. I can show you these door handles. Very interesting door shape. So this is in my driving position. I'm a lot taller. Well, I'm tall on the legs and short in the torso. Let's say that. I'm only 5'10". <laughs> um, rear seats have ample space, a little bit of side support, good thigh support, and they're pretty soft to the touch, pretty soft to sit in, not too firm. Door panels in the rear are pretty basic, standard issue GM of the time. Let's try and get in here. You can see that my legs do touch the seat, but not uncomfortably so. Not a ton of space back here, but not bad. I do have some headroom. This car does have a sunroof, so that cuts into it a bit, especially back here. Natural colored headliner. Give you a view of the dash here quick. We'll move on to the front. Again, pretty standard issue door controls. Nothing special to note here. Good door storage at the bottom there. And then probably the best part about this car that I've enjoyed so far is the seats. They have RS ingrained right into the front of the leather. They have really good thigh support, good side support. They also have RS and the Alcantara inserts on the back. So the main surface is leather that you're sitting on, but the inserts are Alcantara. Nice mix of materials. They also have armrests in the front, which is awesome in a small car like this. You have your light controls and gauge dimmer over here. Climate control vents on the outboard edges are these round pods with regular rectangular ones in the middle. 
and you have this really interesting motorcycle gauge cluster with a tachometer and status lights for everything, but no coolant temp gauge, no uh, analog speedometer, and the odometer doesn't show up whenever there's a status message. For example, the oil percent change that's there is in place of the odometer. You get these pretty cool RS floor mats that are lined in red. Also notice the red stitching in the seats. sport pedals down below that are aluminum trim. Looks like this car also has a knee airbag. Try to get in here. The steering wheel is typical GM design of this age, three spoke, little RS badge down at the bottom here. Then you have your controls to uh, go through your stations and change your source as well as your volume over here and your cruise control buttons on this side. This car also has lane keep assist and automated emergency braking, which is interesting for 2014 in the compact car. I'm impressed. Auto dimming rear view mirror. Decently responsive touchscreen interface down below. The thing I do not like is the fact that you have to push the buttons to change the volume. So if you happen to leave the car on max volume the night before and you get in, there's no way to calm her down quickly if you press the button individual times or hold it and it slowly goes down. <laughs> but otherwise the infotainment's just fine. The stereo system sounds pretty good in this car. There's hard buttons or knobs and dials for all the HVAC controls, push button for the AC and recirc buttons. You also have your door lock and unlock button down here on the top left, hazard light in the middle, status indicator for the passenger airbag on the right there. Heated seats in this car as well, you just push the center of the temperature or mode dials there. Rear defrost is the push button on the middle one. With a little small storage space down below, shift here, six-speed manual with reverse on the top left. You also have some storage pockets on either side of the climate vents up top here. Large deep windshield, which is I'm sure difficult to clean. Long reach to the bottom there. Nice integration between the dash and the door panels. Panel gaps are pretty good in this car. It has two glove boxes. This little top shelf one. And then the regular bottom one that's well dampened. Yeah, I like these seats. Also, there's a sunroof in this car. Sunroof, moonroof. Uh, it's about, probably about 12 inches wide with a manual cover that's fully opaque but provides some nice light inside here. Regular incandescent bulbs inside, and then your sunroof controls right here. Bluetooth in this car as well. These are your Bluetooth microphones right here. Visors. Aren't quite deep enough for my liking with my seating position, but they do the job. Unlit mirrors up here. They do go to the side. They are not sliders, however. I like cars with sliding visors, if you couldn't tell on some of my other videos. <laughs> At this point, I think we're ready to go for a drive. I'll just give it a couple little revs here. Feels like a heavy flywheel in this car, but when you're driving it, it doesn't feel so bad. It's easy to match the shifts and it's got nice short gear ratios I'll demonstrate in a minute. Going over the key on the Chevy Sonic quick, Chevy logo on the back side. Flip out key, because this one is not a push button start. Then your unlock, lock, and panic alarm on the other side. Okay, we're ready to go for a drive in the Sonic.
really excellent turning radius in this little car too. Ride quality is pretty decent for the size of car. The wind noise is actually kept out really well, but you can hear some tire noise in here. It's really not bad. Fuel economy I've heard is really good in these, sometimes averaging up near 35 miles to the gallon. But I'll double check the EPA figures and make sure to note them here. It'd be a really fun daily driver, except for the fact that it's really tight side to side in here. I mean, this, this field of view isn't really showing it that well, but if I had someone next to me, I'd be shoulder to shoulder with them. I'm a pretty wide shouldered dude, but it's comfy enough for a daily driver and with a good sound system would make for a lot of fun, especially for my long commute. I drive 65 miles one way to work when I'm in the office. So yeah. Nice peppy little four cylinder. The gearbox feels pretty good for being a cable shift. Fifth gear is a little bit of a reach. Not a reach for my arm, but if you don't get it just right, you can sometimes miss it and hit third. A lot of fun to drive, really zippy. Short gear ratios make it fun to just row through the gears. And the sharp handling and short wheelbase and slightly lowered suspension from a standard Sonic with the low profile tires make it really fun around like roundabouts and tight on ramps and tight cornering maneuvers. It's a great little autocross car from what I've understood in the past, seeing other people drive them. I'm gonna just whip around this one right here. Oh yeah, no complaints. The car grabs. All right, here's our little zero to 60. It's pretty zippy. I mean, you gotta be in third gear to hit 60 miles an hour. You definitely gotta take your time with the shifts, with the cable shift and all. But it's zippy and fun in traffic, I'm sure. Nice, easy, progressive clutch. Nice gear shift feel. Little, a little rubbery, but not bad overall. So, 2014 Chevy Sonic RS Turbo Manual. The transmission feels really good, especially since this one is uh, new and remanufactured. <laughs> good fuel economy. Decent room in the back seat for how small of a car it is. You could probably get a rear-facing kid seat back there. Uh, visibility is average out the back. The blind spots are, are pretty noticeable with the large pillars back there but otherwise visibility out the front's really good. Ride quality is pretty good. Road noise is pretty average. Uh, space is at a bit of a premium up front, but that's how it is. Otherwise, a lot of fun to drive. Would be a good daily commuter for a single person or maybe two. I wouldn't know about having a family in this car. That'd be a bit tight in my eyes. Otherwise it'd be a fun little car to own. I would recommend. They're pretty, pretty reliable from everything I've heard. The engines are stout. I know you can get a little flash tune for them. That'll pick up a couple of horsepower, 20 to 30, for the little turbo. Makes them a lot zippier. Hope you guys are enjoying my videos. Like, comment, subscribe, and suggest other vehicles you want to see on the channel. And uh, hope to see you guys next time.